Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You are watching South Asia Newsline, have the top stories. We are tracking for you on Monday the 13th of May. India enters fourth phase elections as a rhetoric over religion inequality sharpens. Protesters march towards Muzaffarabad as situation remains tense in Pakistan-occupied Jammu Kashmir. And heavy floods kill thousands, devastate villages in Afghanistan. And now for all the details. India voted on Monday in the fourth phase of a seven-week long general elections as campaign rhetoric became more strident over economic disparities and religious divisions. The polling was held for 96 seats in 10 states and territories on Monday, with over 100 million eligible voters casting their ballots. Many seats are located in the southern and eastern states of Telangana, Andhra Pradesh and Orissa, where the BJP is not as strong as other parts of the country. Voters in India's Kashmir Valley also cast their ballots as the region went to polls for the first time after the abrogation of Article 370 in 2019. I want to vote in the bulk because obviously we India is a big country. We want to vote mass participation, especially the youth. ताकि एक डेमोक्रेटिक प्रोसेस बने और हमारे इंस्टीट्यूशन बिल्ड हो जाए तो उसके लिए बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट है कि हर कोई अपने घर से निकल के क्योंकि माहौल भी अच्छा है वोट डालने का मौसम भी अच्छा है तो हम चाहते हैं कि बल्क में वोटिंग हो। The world's most populous nation began voting on April 19 in a seven-phase election in which nearly one billion people are eligible to vote with ballots set to counted on June 4. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is seeking a rare third straight term in a vote which pits his Bharti Janata Party against an alliance of more than two dozen opposition parties, including main rival Congress. Amid border dispute with China, India's External Affairs Minister S. J. Shankar on Monday said that India has deployed record number of troops to the Ladakh border in recent years to counter China. He emphasized that there is a challenge from China as they have violated agreements and have sent a large number of troops to the border. But despite COVID, India countered the deployed, which is a matter of pride. The minister further noted that the country should support its military and refrain from criticizing or undermining its efforts. Yes, there is a challenge from China. Yes, China has violated uh, agreements and sent large number of troops to the border. But I think country should take pride in the fact, despite the COVID, despite the COVID, we counter deployed, we have sent troops in record numbers to the border. Furthermore, talking about the fourth arrest made by the Canada police in the killing of Khalistani terrorist Hardeep Singh Nijjar, Jay Shankar said India has not received any specific or worthy evidence of being pursued by its investigative agencies. He said New Delhi is willing to cooperate with an investigation if Ottawa possesses any evidence or information pertaining to relevant violence that warrants investigation within India. Nijjar, a terrorist labelled by India, was killed last year. Days after violent clashes broke out across Pakistan-occupied Jammu and Kashmir, the situation continues to remain tense as protesters resume the protest march towards Muzaffarabad. A report. Situations remain tense in Pakistan-occupied Jammu and Kashmir on Monday after violent clashes erupted across the region last week. Majority business hubs remained shut while public transportation was suspended across the region as protesters under the banner of Jammu and Kashmir Awami Action Committee resumed their march towards Muzaffarabad. Several media reports suggest talks between the protesters and authorities have also failed to bring any breakthrough with protesters lamenting the lack of tangible outcomes and accusing the government of deception and delay. Islamabad, which rules the region through a proxy government, has called for peace and expressed concern. It has increased troop deployment and stationed Pakistani rangers to curb the protest march, which has intensified the already tense situation in the occupied region. 
Locals and activists have long accused Pakistan of employing discriminatory policies with no regard to their rights. They accuse Pakistan of falsely claiming to have granted autonomy to POJK, where elected officials have no say in policy making. Several political activists have been voicing their concerns on the international platform as they say assertive international intervention is the only way the helpless people can be saved. Heavy rains causing flash floods in Afghanistan has killed more than 1,600 people and destroyed thousands of homes, leaving people homeless. The Taliban-run refugee ministry says livestock has also been damaged as it is wiped out following heavy rain. Meanwhile, aid groups have warned of widening havoc as healthcare facilities and vital infrastructure have also been damaged. Meanwhile, people on Sunday buried their loved ones where one person said that he had lost five members of his family. Afghanistan is prone to natural disasters and the United Nations considers it one of the countries most vulnerable to climate change. But following the Taliban takeover after foreign forces withdrew in 2021, it's battled a shortfall in aid. That's because development aid that formed the backbone of government finances was cut. This has worsened in subsequent years as foreign governments grapple with competing global crises and growing condemnation of the Taliban's curbs on Afghan women. As India completed the withdrawal of its armed forces personnel from the Maldives, the island nation's defence minister, Ghassan Maimoun, acknowledged that the Maldives lack soldiers capable of operating the aircraft donated by India. The defence minister during a press conference said, despite some personnel undergoing training to fly the drone air and two helicopters under agreements formed under previous governments, the Maldives National Defence Force currently lacks soldiers capable of operating the aircraft. However, when Muizu's administration was in opposition, they criticised the government for allowing Indian personnel to be stationed in Mali, claiming there were capable pilots in Maldivian force. Training of Maldivian Armed Forces personnel to operate the helicopters and aircraft was one of the main reasons for the arrival of Indian personnel in the Maldives. However, following the election of pro-China leader Mohammad Muizu, Mali formally requested India withdraw its troops from Mali, which was completed by May 10. Notably, removal of Indian troops from the Maldives was a key promise of Muizu's party's election campaign. Bangladesh Foreign Minister Hassan Mahmood on Sunday said Myanmar's internal conflict, which was always there, cannot be an excuse for delaying the Rohingya repatriation. Mahmood said that Rohingyas are the citizens of Myanmar and have been there for hundreds of years. The Foreign Minister further said that various problems have arisen due to the presence of the Rohingyas for a long time. He said that the terrorist and fanatic groups are recruiting members from Rohingya camps and that it is not harming Bangladesh but as well as neighbouring countries due to the spread of terrorist networks. The South Asian country is already home to an estimated 1 million stateless Rohingya refugees, most of whom fled brutal 2017 military crackdown that is now subject to a genocide investigation at the International Court of Justice. Days after a split occurred in Janta Samajwadi Party, Nepal, the political party withdrew its support from Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dehel's government on Monday. Submitting his resignation, JSP Nepal chairman Upendra Yadav said his party would no longer support the government under Dehel's prime ministership. Along with Yadav, another minister, Deepak Karki, also tendered his resignation to the prime minister. Both leaders cited the current political climate as untenable for their continued cooperation with the government. The development comes following the withdrawal of support by CP and UML and MyOS Centre on Sunday from the provincial government in Madhesh, leaving JSPN's chief minister in minority. 
However, the tit for tat action by Yadav's JSP won't impact Dehel's administration as it continues to enjoy a narrow majority. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.